Hey there, welcome to Module 7. In this course, we will cover integration management and platform usage. Let's jump in. In this module, we will review the API usage chart within the platform usage section, create and manage OAuth, integrations and data actions, as well as walk through single sign-on and authorized applications. We will also expand on how schedules are utilized in Architect. If you are keeping track, this module will cover the platform usage and integration sections, as well as cover a little bit into the Architect section. Let's get started. The API usage view allows you to see how many API requests your contact center makes and which clients make those requests. If you exceed the fair use policy for API, then this information can help determine which clients make the most requests and which type of request your organization uses most often. You can use that information to streamline your API usage and avoid or plan for overages. The data in this view includes all put, post, get, or delete calls made from your organization in support of custom or third-party applications, integrations, and solutions, including App Foundry apps. It also includes data actions to the Genesis Cloud Public API. This view does not include data about API requests that Genesis Cloud makes to support the function of its browser, web, and mobile apps or outbound data actions to external platforms. It also does not include API requests made by Genesis Cloud embedded clients, including Genesis Cloud for Chrome, Genesis Cloud for Firefox, Genesis Cloud for Salesforce, and Genesis Cloud for Zendesk. To filter the information by date, expand the date search filter and use the filter to customize the report. To export the report into CSV format, click the up arrow. Within the most active requests section, is the top five requests by OAuth clients, which displays the top five clients that made the most number of API requests in the selected time period. The graph helps you to identify the number of successful and failed API calls. HTTP response status codes displays the total number of successful or failed API calls by status regardless of the client. The top five requested URL displays the top five URL that resulted the most number of API calls. This graph helps you identify the URL with failed API calls and in turn helps minimize API calls. Within the OAuth Client Request section, the request counts by OAuth Client displays a count of the calls made by the selected OAuth clients. The HTTP response status codes displays the total number of successful or failed API calls by status regardless of the client. The request URL counts by OAuth client displays all URL that resulted in high API calls. This graph helps you identify the URL with failed API calls and in turn helps minimize these calls. Within the URL requests, URL request displays a list of API requests by URL. The HTTP response status codes displays the total number of successful or failed API calls by status regardless of the URL. Using this chart can assist you in keeping track of how many API calls you have used for the month and if any of the API calls are experiencing issues. Up next, OAuth. OAuth clients allow you to make requests to the platform API or to authenticate against Genesis Cloud or to sync entities between Genesis Cloud and third-party systems. This procedure is for application providers who want their app to receive a token allowing it to make requests to the Genesis Cloud Platform API. The token represents a user's permission for the app to access Genesis Cloud data. It is used when the app must authorize a request to an API endpoint. Under Integrations, click OAuth. Click Add Client. The Client Details tab appears. Set app name to a descriptive name of the app. This name is shown when someone authorizes this OAuth client. Type a brief description of the app in the description box. Next, set the duration of time until tokens created with this client expire. Accept the default duration or enter a value between 300 and 172,800 seconds. This sets the lifetime of the token to a maximum of two days or less. Make a selection below grant types. Grant types set the way an application gets an access token. Genesis Cloud supports the OAuth 2 authorization grant types listed below. Make a selection below grant types. Grant types set the way an application gets an access token. Genesis Cloud supports the OAuth 2 authorization grant types listed below. Client Credentials Grant is a single-step authentication process exclusively for use by non-user applications. The client application provides OAuth client credentials in exchange for an access token. 
This authorization type is not in the context of a user and therefore will not be able to access user-specific API. Code Authorization Grant is a two-step authentication process where a user authenticates with Genesis Cloud. Then the client application is returned an authorization code. The client application provides OAuth client credentials and uses the authorization code to get an access token. The access token can then be used when making authenticated API calls. This is the most secure option and ideal for websites where API requests will be made server-side and some desktop applications where a thin client would authorize the user and pass the auth code to a back-end server to exchange for an auth token and make API requests. Implicit Grant is a single-step authentication process where a user authenticates with Genesis Cloud and the client application is directly returned an access token. This option provides less security for the access token than the authorization code grant, but is ideal for client-side browser applications and most desktop applications. SAML to bearer is an authentication process where a client application may use a security assertion markup language assertion to request a bearer token. In this example, we are going to using client credentials. After selecting client credentials, a roles tab appears so you can assign a role to the OAuth. We're going to use master admin. Click Save. Now that we have the OAuth created, let's move on and create an integration. The integrations page lists the integrations available to install. Categories include chat notifications, webhooks, rough the integrations, or search by third-party system or category. Under Integrations, click Integrations. Let's create our first integration. Click Integration in the upper right corner. In this hands-on, we're going to focus on adding the Genesis Cloud Data Actions integration. Click Install. Clicking Details in the lower right corner for installation instructions. The integration opens to the Details tab. On the Details tab, you can change the integration name and add notes about the integration. The credentials use the Genesis Cloud OAuth client credentials. Click the Configuration tab. Click the Credentials tab. Click Configure. The Configure Credentials dialog box appears. Enter the Client ID. The ID generated when you created Genesis Cloud OAuth Client. Next, enter the Client Secret. The secret generated when you created Genesis Cloud OAuth Client. Click Save. Once saved, you will be returned to the Integrations panel. Activate the integration. Under the integration that you just added, click the Status toggle to change it from inactive to active. A Change Status dialog box appears. Click Yes. Now that we have the integration created, we can now create a data action that will use it. When you add an activated integration, Genesis Cloud automatically adds static actions, if available, for that particular integration. As you can see, since we created a Genesis integration, there are three static actions we have to work with already. In this example, we are going to create a data action to get on QAgent counts. A JSON file will be available for download containing the code used. Under Integrations, click Actions. The Actions page appears. Add Action will allow you to build a custom data action from the ground up. The Import will allow you to browse your computer for a JSON file to import. Browse for the file you downloaded upload it. Under Integration Name, select the Genesis Cloud Data Actions we just created. In the Action Name, you can leave the name as is or change it if needed. Click Import Action. After the data action is added, the created data action will pop up for you to review and publish. The default view is Summary, which shows you the name, authentication type, and allows you to import or export, as well as make this SIPAW compliant. Let's click on the Setup tab. Under the Contracts sub-tab, the input and outputs of the data action are displayed. The Configuration sub-tab is the information that was within the JSON file. Lastly, the Test sub-tab allows you to test your data action to ensure the data action is working correctly. When you are ready, click Save and Publish. Click Yes on Confirmation window. Your data action is now active. As you can see, OAuth, integrations, and data actions work together to allow you to get information, making the caller experience more personalized. Let's move on and review the Authorized Applications view. The Authorized Applications view lists the client applications allowed to operate in your org and the OAuth scopes granted to them. From this view, you can modify what an app is allowed to do or revoke an app so that it can no longer run in your org. The Authorized Applications view and OAuth provide another way to authorize. 
Instead of using the authorized organizations feature to authorize users to use your org, the authorized applications view allows you to grant a scoped set of permissions and data in your Genesis, Cloud org to applications, integrations, and App Foundry apps. Within integrations, click on Authorized Applications. App name is the name of the authorized OAuth client application. You can click the name of an app to change its scope or revoke its authorization. Scope is the scopes that the client is authorized to use. Scopes define what an app is allowed to do in your org. State is whether the app is pending, approved, or revoked. Roles is what roles have been assigned to the app. The three vertical dots open a menu where an app can be edited or revoked. To create a new client, you can click on the Authorize a Client button. With this being directly tied to OAuth, we will not be creating a new client, but this is an excellent way to view the clients you have authorized as well as revoke access. We will provide a step-by-step -step guide, however. Next up, single sign-on. Add Genesis Cloud as an application that organization members can access through a single sign-on account. Genesis Cloud supports various third-party identity providers for single sign-on integrations. With SSO enabled, you will first access Genesis Cloud by logging into your SSO provider with your SSO provider credentials. After the initial sign-in, you can click the SSO provider link at the bottom of the page to log in with your SSO provider credentials. Genesis Cloud provides single sign-on integrations for these third-party SAML-based identity providers. Google Workspace Microsoft Active Directory Federation Services Microsoft Azure Active Directory Premium Edition Okta One Login Ping Identity Pure Connect Salesforce Genesis Cloud also provides a generic identity provider configuration that enables Genesis Cloud customers to integrate with most identity providers that support SAML 2.0. The Genesis Cloud Single Sign-On Strategy provides customers with these authentication options. Service Provider Initiated Authentication At the Genesis Cloud Authorization Server, users select the SAML identity provider they want to authenticate with. Genesis Cloud redirects them for authentication. Identity Provider Initiated Authentication After authentication, the SAML Identity Provider presents users with a list of registered applications. When users select Genesis Cloud, the system asserts their identities to the Genesis Cloud Authorization Server. Since single sign-on requires third-party info to integrate, we are not providing a hands-on how-to in this module. But we will be providing step-by-step -step guides for all of the identity providers listed, attached to this module. Up next, we are going to walk through how schedule and emergency groups play a role in the architect call flows. As we discussed in an earlier module, a schedule stipulates when a flow runs and is based on the date, time, or event. You can define schedules to handle recurring events, holidays, or special situations. To get started, click Architect under the Architect section. A new browser window opens with a list of the call flows currently built. Click on the test call flow your organization uses for testing. Keep in mind that your evaluate schedule group may not look like the example. Our example is to give you an idea of how schedules can affect the call outcome. The evaluate schedule group action allows us to add the schedule group and emergency group we created in an earlier module. Adding these groups will now allow the call flow to evaluate which schedule is active. Genesis Cloud evaluates the schedules in the following order. Emergency. Holiday. Close. Open. Let's evaluate some of the different ways a call flow can react when a certain schedule is active. If open, you will see that we are routing to a menu. That way a caller can make a selection and get routed to an available agent. If closed, the caller will be routed to voicemail, and that voicemail will be placed into the queue and assigned to an agent when they are available. If holiday, the caller will be transferred to another external number. This may be done if the organization has a third party handle their voicemails or after hour support. For emergency, the caller will hear a prompt saying there is some kind of issue and the call will be disconnected. Besides these possible scenarios, there are several more, but for this module, it is important to understand how schedules can affect the different paths. You should start to see how everything we have talked about in this course is starting to intertwine together, which in turn makes the responsibilities of the administrator that much more important. To recap, this module we walk through creating OAuth, integrations, and data actions. We also walk through single sign-on and authorized applications. 
we also went through the API usage chart. We expanded on how schedules affected what path the caller will take and the potentially different paths there are. As our previous modules, all step-by-step -step guides are attached to this module and can be downloaded through the paid course. Thank you for completing Module 7. In Module 8, we will discuss quality and performance management. See you there.